Hi, I am Philipp Diersing, a software engineer in the Autosub Blockset team at MathWorks. I'll show you how to use Autosub Blockset to design software architectures and leverage model-based design for Autosub. This process starts from an architecture level and goes right down to the component level, thus reducing the need for additional Autosub authoring tools. We can start our design right here from the simulating start page. The Autosub block set comes with a set of predefined template models that allow you to jump straight into the Autosub designs. There's templates for both Autosub Classic and Adaptive Platform component models, but we'll start with the Autosub Classic Platform software architecture template. In this canvas, we design, assemble, and analyze classic Autosub software architectures by dragging blocks, creating skeleton models, linking existing models, or importing components on compositions from ARXML. In this example, we will focus on creating a design top-down, reusing existing component models without any need to import from ARXML. These workflows are now supported via a powerful programmatic API that allows you to automate these processes via MATLAB scripts. Spotlight views allow focusing on individual components and their context within an architecture model. Freeform architecture views can be used to create custom queries and narrow down on specific aspects of complex architectures. Software architecture designs are driven by requirements. With the Requirements Manager, we can link our implementation to these requirements to get enhanced traceability. You can highlight the links to see exactly where a requirement is implemented, and you can check the descriptions of the requirements and their rationale to see if a requirement is implemented correctly. Let's now implement the census composition. We have two redundant throttle position sensors. The redundancy is important for the safety critical sensor. A monitor checks the sensors for faults and chooses the signal to be used by the controller. We also have a pedal sensor for the driver's input. In just a few seconds, we have added the necessary components for this sensor composition. We already have qualified component implementations in the form of simulating models. We can now easily and quickly link these to the respective component blocks and connect their ports to each other. We can also um, adjust port placement and expose ports to the upper level of the hierarchy. We also want to add an actuator to react to the sensor input as processed by the controller. Again, we can quickly link these components to our implementation models and link them up. We expose hardware inputs and outputs to the outside of the top level composition. At the end of this process, a quick auto arrange gives us a neat overview of the signal flow in our architecture and arranges the component blocks properly. With our model-based design environment, we can now go straight to simulation and hit play on this composition. This allows us to verify the implementation models are correctly configured. We can simulate component interactions with the RTE and basic software using several provided basic software blocks. We now want to test our software architecture inside a test harness to provide some input and simulate the response with a plant model in the system. We've got some simulated pedal input for the pedal sensor, as well as a simulated throttle body to react to the actuator signal and feed back the current position of the throttle to the redundant sensors. We can simulate the test harness and look at the throttle position as compared to the simulated pedal input stimulus provided here. We can see that the throttle position follows the request nicely. Once we have tested and verified our design and implementation, we want to generate code for our component models as well as ARXML describing the components, compositions and connections and interfaces, types and the implementation of the architecture. These artifacts can be brought to an RTE generator for deployment. We generate C code for all the software components individually as we do in component workflows. Let's have a look at the generated ARXML files. We can see that we have two ARXML files per component one containing the component description and one for the implementation. Additionally, we have ARXML files containing the compositions and also files describing the accumulated data types and interfaces shared between the components and compositions in this architecture. And this is how you can use Autosub block set and model-based design to design Autosub architectures from compositions over components and generate C code as well as ARXML. Thank you very much for listening. This is Philip Diersing from MathWorks.